two weeks ago, I started sharing with us on the topic, Arise. And this morning, we are just going to take a continuation of that. So if you want to take it as Arise Part 2, that's fine, because that's exactly what it is. We told us two weeks ago that Arise is a call to wake up. It's a wake up call. That is, it is a call to an awareness. Because those who are sleeping, what they've simply lost is an awareness of their environment. It's an awareness of the reality going on around them. And spiritually, it's exactly what it is. Hallelujah. To those who have not yet known the Lord, it's a call from death to life, from sin to righteousness. Amen. It's a call to repentance. An awareness until a people become aware of their situation and circumstances, they will not do something about it. And it's the same thing for every sinner. The first thing God will do is to bring a man or a woman to the awareness of their true situation. And when the people become aware of their situation, they can take action. Hallelujah. Amen. And I just want us to proceed from there, really. And two weeks ago, we simply said, an awareness of what? Even for those of us who have believed, now, focusing on the believers, an awareness of who we are. Who are we in this world? Who are we? And that has to tally with who God says we are. Anything different shows that you are still not aware, you are asleep. We must be aware of our identity. Who are we? Who am I? And the next thing we said is, the next thing we said was, why are we here? The purpose. We are who we are for a purpose. And what are we expected to be doing? If you understand purpose, purpose comes with responsibility. There are things we have to be doing in order to fulfill the purpose of our existence. Then we went on to talk about an awareness of what we have. What is it that we have? Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of God has risen upon you. That is what we have. We carry a glory from God that brings us into a position where we can shine. Hallelujah. Awareness of what we have. If you don't know what you, you have, you cannot use it. If you don't know what is available for you, you cannot 
fulfill purpose. May the Lord give us understanding in Jesus' name. That is very important. There's another awareness that we couldn't touch two weeks ago, and that's where I'm starting this message from. It's an awareness of where we are in terms of the plans and purpose of God. And by that, I'm talking about an awareness of time. Time. Men who did something in their time and generation, they were aware, they were conscious, they walked in the consciousness of the time that they were in. That is an area that I think most of us and the larger part of the church of God generally, we are failing. We have to come to an awareness with regards to time. Those who must walk with God, those who must fulfill the purposes of God, those who must do something meaningful in their time and generation, they must be aware of time. What times are we in? Let's turn now to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. In the book of Romans chapter 13, the scripture has got this to tell us. Romans 13. Romans 13, I think I should be reading, sorry. I should be reading from verse uh, 11. Romans 13 from verse 11. And do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake. I've told us that arise and awake, they're exactly the same word that can be used interchangeably, depending on the context of the passage. So in this place, you can say high time to arise out of sleep. For now, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is past spent. The day is at hand. So you will call people to say, arise, wake up, when you know it is morning time. Those of us who have young ones, children, and you know they are oversleeping and they have to be in school by half eight, you go and knock on their door, isn't it? Because you are simply telling them, you need to wake up now and get ready for school. So an awareness of time, high time. Paul and other apostles, they recognize the high time. They were able to discern the Kairos moments in their days. And we'll come back to Ephesians chapter 5 shortly. And if you go on, you says, Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Something has got to change. It's a call to be aware of change. Changing time, changing season. And a time to be aware of the opportunities that are tied to the time that we're in. Hallelujah. That's what it means to arise. This is what an awakening is in the church. This is what revival is about, an awareness of time and the need for a change. Essentially, the call to arise means things cannot be business as usual. Things cannot continue exactly the same way for our lives anymore. 
There's got to be a change. There's got to be something different. Hallelujah. Let's go on. It says, let us walk properly as in the day, not in reverie, not in drunkenness and lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. Because certain dispositions and behavior, they don't befit certain times. Certain things could have been ignored. The Bible talked about, you know, the, the, the days of ignorance God overlooked. There are times where certain things are tolerated, but when there's a change in time, they can no longer be tolerated. That is exactly what it is. To arise means there must be a change of position, a change of disposition, a change of attitude, a change of garment is what is called, talking about here. Dress code changes, isn't it? If you are dressing in winter as though you are still in summer, people will look at you and say it's odd. People will call attention to it. What weather forecast are you listening to? Are we getting the point now? An awareness of time. Something has to change in our lives. Something has to change, you know, just from within us. Amen. Because certain things are not going to be compatible with the time that we are in, if we are truly going to arrive. No one arises spiritually in envy and jealousy. No one arises in malice. No one. Amen. No one arises in drunkenness, in lust of any kind, all, all kinds. No one. It will be a deception. You remember in the battle of the children of Israel uh, against the Philistines? You remember? In that chapter when they went and carried the ark of God. And they were shouting. They said, the ark of God. Let's bring the ark of God into this battle. They were arising in a state that does not befit what they were carrying. In fact, the Philistines, they were shaking. When they heard the shout, they said, wow, God has come among them. But you see, they were arising physically without arising spiritually. Something was wrong there. And they lost the battle. There is a state in which we cannot arise. Do you know that in the call that God was giving us last week through our sisters to pray, you cannot, there are certain states in which you cannot arise. There, are, there is a positioning for prayer. Anyone who must pray must, have, must be in a state where they can pray. <laughs> Amen. We can stand there and join our hands and bind and loose together and say we are praying. But if the situation, the conditions in which we are in individually is not right, nothing will be achieved. I, I just believe that God is calling our attention to something. And this may be, to, first of all, a repentance, heart searching, like God was calling us to do during the worship time. Search your heart. Search me, O oh Lord. And know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked ways in me. O oh God, and lead me in the path of righteousness. So God is awakening us to something. And that may first of all be each of us coming to an awareness of the time that we're in. That it cannot be business as usual. We cannot continue to live our lives the way we are living it and expect some miracles to happen suddenly. It's not going to happen. Amen. God is not... If God is calling the people to arise, it shows that there is hope for them. Whichever state they may be in. Amen. 
if this if they come here is to a perfect people there will be no need to mention what is going on here it shows that people need to adjust people need to come to their senses amen but there's always a solution put on the lord jesus christ and make no provision make no room for the flesh to fulfill its laws. Get rid of things that can, in essence, draw you into things you don't want to do. Hallelujah. We all know when we are going in the wrong direction, we all know it. Take away those things that will readily tilt you in the direction that you don't want to go. That's exactly the point here. Is this point clear? Time is important. Whenever it comes to God's plans and purpose, time is always important. Arise. Be conscious of the time that we're in. There are things God is doing and God wants to do but we need to recognize their timing. And I could see God calling us into consciousness of time and the state in which we need to be in order to meet the demand for the time. Amen. Let's check, let's check our hearts. Let's check our lives. As we are rising, let's check. Because that's the way to arise. Maybe we'll discuss separately, how do we arise? But there are already things God is showing us here. Repentance is one of the ways in which we arise. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. In Ephesians chapter 5, to save time, it says, verse 14, Therefore, it says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, arise from the dead. We have said this before. Anyone who wants to arise must arise in the right kind, in the right, in the right kind of group and association. Amen. If you are rising, you must position yourself in the right kind of company. Some of us need to look at our friendship. The kind of association we put ourselves in. Whether they, are, whether they form a group that will either uphold us as we are standing up or they will draw us down no matter how much effort we make. Look at the next thing. And Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Can you see arising within the context of time? And look at what follows. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. To understand the will of God. That is, what is God doing in my time? And what will God have me do in my time? Is also an awareness of time. Because there is always the will of God for every moment, for every second, for every minute of our lives. Amen. May we be stirred up in our hearts to understand the will of God, to know the plans of God for us at this time in Jesus' name, individually and collectively. Amen. I could have pushed on on this issue of time, but let's move on to what else does it mean to arise? To arise is a call to be prepared. 
is a call to prepare. It's a call to be prepared, to be ready. And even in that Romans 13 that we read, you can see that it's, a, it's about preparation. Get rid of this, get rid of that, position yourself this way. That is preparation. Prepare. Get ready. Put yourself in the right kind of position. Preparation. It's a call to prepare. It's a call to prepare. For some of us, we are not prepared for the things that God wants to do. For instance, if you hear God constantly telling you, or telling me, or telling us together, as in Isaiah 43, I think verse 19, where it says, behold, I will do a new thing. So it shall spring forth. And before it springs forth, shall you not know it? That's a call to preparation, isn't it? It's simply showing that time is changing. Something new is going to happen. There should be a new state of heart and mind to receive what is coming. That is what arise means. Prepare for it. Something new. I'm going to do something new. Get yourself ready for that. It's a call to prepare for what God wants to do. The other thing it could also mean is a call to prepare for an, for an assignment, for something God will have you do, for something God will have you take on. Some of us, we are not in readiness for the next phase of our life yet. And when God says arise, he says prepare for this next phase of your life. There's a next phase for us as as individuals, there's a next space for us as families. There's a next space for us as a church. And as the church of God globally, there's a next space. And when God is saying, arise, God is saying, get prepared for the next space. Get prepared for the next challenge. Get prepared for the next assignment ahead of you. There's a next space for our destiny to be accomplished on the earth. And God is saying, prepare yourself for that. Let me show you. Let me show us that. Or if someone can find it, Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, which we have read today, chapter one. Jeremiah chapter one. In Jeremiah chapter one, and I'll, maybe I'll pick some of these prophets because since I'm, we are in the prophets now, I mean, just pick some of them, just to see that when God wanted to do something new in their life, God would say, arise, arise, prepare for this. Verse 17, can someone read for me Jeremiah 1, verse 17 and 18 and 19. Okay. Therefore, prepare yourself and arise. And yeah, speak to them. Prepare yourself and arise. Therefore, prepare yourself and arise. Get yourself ready for the next stage. Get yourself ready for the next stage. Are we get, do we get that now? So prepare. Arise. So the, uh, the call to arise is tied to preparation for something that is coming, for something that's about to happen. Imagine if God, and I'm sure God could have, if God had awakened some people before this trouble between Ukraine and Russia started and said, prepare. You get the point I'm making, prepare. Something is about, prepare for it. That's how God does. God will always confide in his servants, the prophets. For the Lord God will do nothing except he has confided in his prophet, in his servants, the prophets. Do you get the point I'm making? But we could ignore the call to arise and then something happens. Go on, my sister, quickly. And speak to them all that I command you. 
Do not be dismayed before their faces, lest I dismay you before them. For behold, I have made you this day a fortified city and an iron pillar and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against his princes, against his priests, and against the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you, for I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. Amen. Amen. You know, Jeremiah had not entered into this call yet. God was saying, prepare. <laughs> The, the, the challenges ahead are great. Just prepare for it. Get yourself in, in the right kind of mind. You are going to face challenges, but get ready, ready for it because the ultimate end of it is deliverance, is victory, is conquest for you. Hallelujah. But get ready. Preparation here is a preparation for an assignment. Preparation for an assignment for the prophets. And part of that is God showing him who he has already made him, the equipping he has to deal with the challenges. God has equipped us well as a people. As individuals, as the church, I personally believe God has equipped us well. It's time to arise. It's time to get ourselves ready for the next space for the next things that God has for us. Arise is a call to preparation. Amen. Turn with me. Just like I said, I'll take another prophet, Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. In Ezekiel chapter 3, exactly the same kind but God using another word, and look at what happened there, verse 1, in Ephesians chapter 2, sorry, Ezekiel chapter 2. And he said to me, son of man, stand on your feet. Again, arise. That's another way to say arise, isn't it? Stand on your feet means arise. Is that not correct? So, and I will speak to you. Here is a call to arise to hear the voice of God. To hear what God is saying to you, to hear the next instruction, to hear is a preparation. Hearing the voice of God is a preparation for something. God doesn't just speak for, for the sake of speaking. He speaks to prepare people. He was speaking to us this morning as we were worshiping because he's preparing us for something. Look at the next thing. Then the spirit entered Sorry, yes, and I will speak to you. Then the spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet. And I heard him who spoke to me. And he said to me, son of man, I am sending you. Hearing the voice of God to have a message to deliver. Hallelujah. If God is sending us, to bring messages, then we must be in a place of readiness to hear what he's saying so that we may have a good delivery, preparation for something. And I believe God is calling all of us to prepare for something. Amen. For the journey ahead, for the task ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I could go on and on on that. But let me round up by talking about the last bit of it is a call for action. It's a call to take action, a call for obedience. Yes, for those who have already, you know, been hearing and they have obeyed the call of God to arise, to hear his voice, to prepare, there's also the the next call of arise to them, because the call of God to arise will come to us at different stages. Isn't that what we have, we have just said this morning? If you are an unbeliever, God will call you and say, arise, repent. If you're a backslider, arise, repent. Change. 
your thinking, your reasoning, your disposition towards God, do something different. So it could also be a call for action, a call to take action for those who are already prepared. God is saying, take specific steps now. Take specific actions now. There is a now action to take for you as a person, for me as a person, and for us as a people. Taking action. Arise, do this. Arise, do that. Because God is already saying, I've prepared you. Now arise and do X, Y, and Z. Hallelujah. What action is it? So in essence, the call to obedience in following certain instructions that God has already given you. Action. Arise is an action word. Arise is an action word. Amen. Let me just quickly, I, I, I was thinking, which one should I do? Should I take? Hmm. Okay, come with me to Lamentation, the book of Lamentation. Since I'm closer to the book of the prophets, let me take Lamentations chapter two. Maybe to tie it with the message we had last week. Maybe that will be a good place to stop this morning. Lamentations chapter two. And I'm reading for us verse uh, 19. Lamentations 2, verse 19. Look at the call. Even though women were mentioned here, men are also included. An action. It says, arise, cry out in the night. That's an action, isn't it? Amen. That's an action to take. Cry out in the night. Cry out. At the beginning of the watches, pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. A call to pray. It's not going to be com- convenient, but it's a call to, to pray. Look at what it says. Lift your hands towards him for the life of your young children who faint from hunger at the head of every street. In fact, this is not the one I was even referring to. I was going to, to look at. But this is a call to all. Arise, cry in the night. Lift up your, your hands. Pray. It's a call to arise and pray. Talk to the Lord. Say, see, O oh Lord, and consider. Plead with God. He was talking about for your children, for your young children. Can I quickly say this as we close? If there's any time we need to take the business of of our children, of our youth, seriously, it is now. If we want to prepare the next generation, this is the time to cry before God for them. I get worried. If, if 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 you want to know the kind of thing that bothers me, I get worried about this generation, this young generation of people. I get worried. The challenges are enormous. If we want to have a generation of children that will rise up to uphold the faith, this is the time to pray for them. Arise, cry. If we're looking at what do I pray for? Pray, take the, let's take the business of praying for our children, our young ones, our youth very seriously at this time. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. That's just one of the actions, very specific. Arise, cry in the man. Do all night prayer. Not for a new car. Not for a new house. They are not wrong. But here is a specific answer. Pray for this too. Rise up in the man. 
I have seen my parents wake up in the night. When my dad was alive, sometimes you just see him wake up in the middle and pray. You get the point I'm making? May God give us understanding of what this is about in Jesus' name. The church of God, I'm just saying this to round up. It is not necessarily meant, God just brought it up now. The church of God needs to arise to pray and intercede for the next generation. The business of the next generation must concern us. We cannot just leave our children and just say, it doesn't matter. It matters. We must pray for them. For the challenges are enormous. May the Lord give us understanding in Jesus' name. Let's bow down heads as we talk to God because of our time. Just talk to God briefly. Thank God for all that He has been speaking to us since morning. Specific instructions. Specific instructions. Let's pray for the grace to arise. I like Ezekiel that we read that chapter two. Said as he was speaking to me, the spirit entered into me and lifted me up on my feet. As he was hearing the voice of God, strength came into him to stand up on his feet. May we receive strength. May we receive grace from above. By this spirit of the Lord, may we be strengthened in the inner man for the next phase, the next stage of assignment for our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Amen.